back to no apologies. Today we're going to begin our ascent of the six steps to Catholicism and we're going to take a look at the first step and begin to show some rational proofs for the existence of God. And the first proof that we're going to take a look at is one taught by St. Thomas Aquinas which is an argument from motion and it's based on this principle that anything that's in motion is in motion is put in motion by another. So the principle is, anything that is in motion is put in motion by another. And St. Thomas explains that all that motion is, is the reduction of something from its potentiality to its actuality. So a matchbox car sitting on the table has the potential to move. And if it does that, it's gone from its potentiality to its actuality. It's actually moving. Now, nothing can do that, go from its potential to its actual, except if it's moved by something which is already in its state of actuality. So the car moves because my hand, which is already moving, moves it. Now, it's impossible for something to be both in the state of potentiality and actuality at the same time if you're dealing with the same action. So the car that's moving is impossible to be actually moving and at the same time have the potential to be moving. Or another example would be fire. Fire, which is actually hot, can't at the same time be potentially hot. So that being the case then, it's logically impossible for something to be both the mover and the moved. It can't move itself. So the conclusion that we reach with St. Thomas is that if there is any motion, it must be put in motion by another, and that by another, and that by another, and that by another, all the way back to the beginning. And when you reach the beginning, we have to ask, well, why did the planet start to spin? And how did the sun start to burn? And the conclusion that we reach is that there must have been some external agent, an unmoved person, who began the very first movement. St. Thomas calls this person the prime mover, and this is who we understand to be God. Now, why can't that reaction just go off into infinity? Well, because reason demands at some point you hit the first mover because of this syllogism. If there's no first unmoved mover, then there can't be any secondary movements. And it, there are secondary movements, therefore there must be a first unmoved mover. In other words, if there was no first unmoved mover to start everything, there would still simply be no movement from infinity before to infinity beyond. But there is movement, and so we conclude there must have been a first unmoved mover, the prime mover. Thanks for joining me here on No Apologies. I hope to see you again next week. Ave Maria. Mm -hmm.